I'll, I'll just give a quick background. I'm Anjit. I'm heading the business development at Focal Energy. Uh, we are an energy based company investing in one of the portfolio of renewable energy assets. With our initial focus being India, and uh, we're not uh, restricted to solar. We've done biomass, small hydro as well, and we are now also uh, you know, focused on the solar sector. I let the other panelists uh, introduce themselves as well as uh, their, their organizations, and then we can get into a panel discussion. Uh, Anubhav, please. Uh, so very quickly, I'm Anubra Joshi. I represent Cleantech Solar. We are a Risco you know, company, primarily focused on the rooftop space, but now we're looking at some open access projects as well. So we invest, own, operate, and hold the assets on our books, primarily, like I said, in the rooftop space. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Ritu Lal, uh, representing a company, M Plus Solar. And uh, we are a dedicated uh, distributed uh, solar power developer focusing on uh, rooftop solar as well as uh, open access projects in the states where the policy allows it. Yeah, good morning everyone. I am Saurav Shivastav. I represent Tata Clean Tech Actor, uh, which is a Tata Sons uh, financial arm. And uh, we are primarily focused for funding uh, a clean technology project which includes wind, solar, hydro. Uh, water efficiency, so we need to ban the uh, water. Yeah. Good afternoon all. I am Rakesh Kalsi. I am Assistant Vice President in PTC India Financial Services. Uh, we are also a lender, uh, similar like uh, Tata Clean Tech, and we are majorly into power sector and into other infrastructure areas. Thank you. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity. I am Randeep Bora. I represent CleanMax Solar uh, and I fundamentally do look into the government business. I am heading the department. And owning uh, rooftop projects. Uh, you know, from our experience, we have not seen many lenders in that space as well. So, uh, you know, specifically in the smaller scale. So, you know, if you can tell us first how, uh, you know, what are the challenges you face as, an, as a developer, as an equity holder. Uh, in financing these projects, and maybe you know uh, uh, how you're coming up, uh, how how you're coping with those. Yes, sir. I think that's completely accurate. That this is not uh, not a space that is tailor made for lenders. Uh, I mean, especially institutional lenders, but pretty much any kind of lenders because uh, transactions are smaller in in size. That's in fact the reason. Utility scale solar the world over uh, kind of grew at a much faster pace than residential or commercial industrial. And some people argue that commercial industrial rooftop solar is actually the trickiest of the lot because, at least in some uh, environments, most countries there is some form of credit rating or a credit score related to a uh, you know to a residential owner, and you can use developed financial technologies such as securitization as a approach to literally build up as you would home mortgages or uh, credit card receivables, car loan receivables, etc. You can treat the PPA receivables from the residential sector in that manner. So as we have seen in the West, residential sector took that path and seems to have pretty much caught up with utility scale. Utility scale, we've heard amazing things from, you know, happen in India and across 3 rupees and all that good stuff. This is a very challenging sector. So uh, absolutely, I mean, you know, this is not an attempt to thwart the competition. Uh, it truly is a difficult sector. You have to go in with fairly well thought out strategy about your capital. Uh, probably you have to be very, very well healed. Going into it, we had enough capital for about three to five years. So that's the kind of way to approach it because if after doing your first 10 projects, you're looking for capital, then you're not looking for ad projects and you're distracted. So I think that's sort of the first part of the, the, the answer. Once you do have a portfolio, I think they can, I mean, we certainly believe, and I'm sure Ritu can comment on it in more, much more detail, both institutional capital and lenders kind of are at this stage, I mean, for the larger guys, are 
I wouldn't use the word chasing after them, but they definitely, the power equation is not what it was a year or two years ago. So you develop the right portfolio, you will still have issues of your PPAs not being identical because your project may be one megawatt or two megawatts, a couple of million dollars, but your counterparty is a very, very large industrial entity. They will not take your cookie cutter PPA and say, oh, you have a, sir, it's a small project, you have to sign this document this way. So your PPAs cannot be made to look identical. So some PPAs will get rejected by the lenders and so on and so forth. Diligence by lawyers is a huge effort uh, to go through, you know, 20 different PPAs. All that said, once you can follow a basic template and a lot of discipline, which competitors like, you know, ourselves and plus others can follow, uh, then you can present portfolios of, call it, uh, 50, 70 projects and seek financing that way. So that's our sort of thoughts on it. The entire uh, utility <coughs> and solar sector would not have seen the kind of variation or the back and forth that about 500 transactions between, say, all of us and other, uh, uh, you know, rest cooperators would have happened, maybe 1,000. And that is 1,000 negotiations, 1,000 BPAs, and a 1,000 times, in my view, at least, uh, Definitely our view, uh, they have survived to have terms which are essentially financeable as far as we see it. I don't know how many times you've seen a PPA which is unfinanceable, which is bilateral. This is a very important evolution. I mean, we appear not to be showing discipline, but we are showing a lot of discipline. No one's given up a deep generation clause. I hope you haven't. Uh, but, but, you know, and things like that. So there are some basics. The one has to understand how the market is doing very well. It, just so on a positive note. Discoms are not uh, willing to take that risk right now, saying that you know you're taking away good customers. Why should we support you in that? So when I mean, there is there is a you know, component where the government is not really supportive of that as of now. Maybe Haryana can do that as a. See, they're going to. I, I'll keep pitching to you, sir. But maybe Haryana can come no, up no, with this. Well, today it's not allowed. It's not but, allowed. But going forward, when you're saying 30, 40 percent of your energy 20 years down the line is going to come from renewables. And if util utilities aren't required, yeah, whatever you're pushing, you need a system of generation, transmission, and distribution. Utilities will have to change what they are doing. Right? So a tripartite agreement, uh, I think, is allowed. It specifically says that if, let's say, a customer defaults for the rooftop payments, then the discount cannot disconnect. But yeah. if it's a tripartite yeah. agreement where it says that the payment is routed through the discount, I think that's still allowed. Now, so the issues with what you can do and what you can't do, right? If uh, the school or the developer, not if the school is not interested, they develop a power a rooftop power project, maybe around 500 kilowatt or maybe more than that. They have sufficient space. In that case, the school requirement would be met. Okay, that is a uh, very up to two o'clock, three o'clock or so. Their power requirement is not very high. But are they allowed to either whatever this generation is there to feed into the grid? Or can they make a kind of a small grid area and supply to some residential area? Is that being allowed by the discom or by the government? So uh, certain states do have this. I think I think Rajasthan also has that. So one is net metering, where at a certain point you are supplying more than what is the, the consumption in the building. You can supply to the grid and then set it off against. Uh, that is a standard. That project. is a standard. Then there is. Uh, Suppose if, if I, I remember correctly, even Rajasthan has this that any surplus that you sell to the state, there is a defined tariff. No, uh, no, I think what, on, on what I'm way. trying to tell you is uh, the developer or the school, they generate the power and they sign a PPA with uh, different, you know, the residential uh, homeowners <coughs> and they supply power instead of a discount, they supply power to them. Will that be allowed? Yeah, sir. So, so, yeah, but one way to, I mean, why solve this problem in a complicated way when the solution is necessarily needed? There's enough demand or let's say you can definitely shut down the beaker, like a, a, a higher heat rate, uh, uh, you know, plant and just run your better, more efficient plants, coal plants, gas-fired plants, uh, and supply this power pack. So net metering is an adequate solution. And perhaps on that sort of note or comment, the single most important thing that we would request as rooftops or the developers for to become consistent, easy, and simple across the nation is net metering. 
if that were allowed, and ideally allowed for two, two and a half, three megawatts, because oh, okay. we don't have too many projects larger than that uh, in, on rooftop. That would be adequate, it wouldn't destabilize the transformers or anything. Uh, that one single thing would allow all the expansion you're talking about, plus schools. We cannot do schools unless we are absolutely certain and metering is certain. So, so your point is very well taken. The second part, you don't need to solve that problem yet because the grid can take a lot of your extra power. Uh, my question is directed towards Ms. Shruti Rai. Uh, so you mentioned that this tripartite agreement is something that might work. But uh, from what I understand, Karnataka, uh, sometime back, maybe a year back or so, had something like this where end consumers were signing PPAs with discount. But the bottleneck was not there. The bottleneck was really in the investor interest. So, I mean, I just wanted to understand is Ampla is going to be interested in deals like that? And do you really think your payments are secure with the discounts? And uh, <laughs> I don't want to comment on the Karnataka issue. And I think, I'll, uh, yeah, let's leave the Karnataka issue aside. But also the other important part is that the tripartite agreements need to say that the distribution licensee will disconnect the power. Now that's the critical part of, of this contract, which I which I don't think was there in that case. Exactly, exactly. That has to be approved by the ERC. Yes, that has to be approved by the ERC. Uh, it can be done, uh, but it hasn't been done yet. It may not get legislative uh, buy-in at all. So, but that is a way to take it. That is one option of taking it forward, where the utilities start investing in rooftop solar plants. Maybe it won't be M plus. Maybe it will be the discom, which apart from distributing whatever uh, thermal power or whatever is being fed through the substations, also becomes a developer, and discom starts doing rooftop solar plants. So we'll just take two more questions. Uh, one from you, sir. Uh, you have a question. Yeah. I am Major Sagi, retired from Army. I am not an entrepreneur. I am not the organization. But I am a social worker as well as I am the president of Senior Citizens and Access Plan of my area, that is from Rada. I have heard all of you. Very nice talk very nice ideas, but you may laugh on my head. I think I request not to laugh, but if you really wish that this energy should go to the villages of the uh, underground areas, or I say my area I take on, as you said, you are providing the finances. I give you another idea that we have made societies in our villages, small scale, 10 people, 20 people, 30 people. For example, I tell you, there is one society of 20 people, those who wish to buy a car. But at one time, sorry to drop, but can you, in the interest of time, can you your I, 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 I will give you the idea and your time will be utilized. And you may be astonished with my idea or I'm sure sir, but we but have a okay. long agenda to okay. Go, so okay. we okay. have a timeline. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's come to the idea okay. sir, I think okay. let's really <laughs> The finances which you are trying to provide is individual. I'll say the society, I'll take a society of 20 people, the social people never defer, they always pay, they pay in such. And say usually I have 20 people, I want you to have um, uh, the rooftop. First, I will take and 20 people within 20 months they will take. Now, my point is that part is sure that you will get money. My only question is now to Surya or whatever you people have. Thank you. That give us the capability of rooftop as well as the finances as well as what our societies can get discounts. Thank you. So I think uh, I know of a few NGOs who are doing it and a few organizations which are doing 
something like what you are saying which is actually going into micro grids setting up uh, solar uh, projects in areas which are not well connected or which do not get enough supply of power so that's definitely a big market you know not everybody can do that you know different in, different investors different funders have different risk profiles uh, and it's a cultural thing also you know you said societies don't default uh, to a great extent that is true but you know uh, can you build a business model around it it's also a question so i think there are some people doing it not everybody can do it i think that's that's uh, the specialized organizations were doing it and not everybody can do it so, so, so specifically i mean what you are in fact suggesting is uh, popularly sometimes referred to as community solar and it exists and you can have wind biomass solar and few aspects combined however the society together has to end up then taking up the responsibility essentially like an rwa taking up the responsibility and in some ways be more credit worthy than the in than the sum of the parts they might be deposits they might be 20 30 40% of the project cost paid and the rest on an opex basis so this happens i don't think this is the necessarily the right group but community solar exists and uh, you know less so in india but definitely that's the that's the segment it doesn't have to be ngos or social funding people can do it on a semi profitable basis so this exists and if anybody is knows of it you may you know the so i think we'll uh, we'll close the session here uh, we've had a very interesting discussion and as per us uh, we all know that there is a huge potential in the rooftop sector there are challenges to be addressed and uh, you know each of us in our own way is trying to address those challenges and uh, create a business out of it and of course uh, wherever we can get supportive government uh, policies that helps and uh, Uh, I think uh, we'll continue working on it, and uh, we definitely see a big potential in the rooftop market.